Hi, friends. Welcome to Immigration News by Ting Law. We have five tips today for you on how to properly file your application without getting a rejection. This is very important because on October second, twenty twenty, this year, immigration is USCIS is increasing their fees. So you want to file, you want to prepare your application completely and accurately. Okay, if you are going to do this on your own, please take your time in reviewing the instructions. Now today we're going to go through five tips on how to properly file your application without getting rejected. Now, friends, the reason why we're sharing these tips is because in July of 2018, USCIS sent out a memo, a letter saying that they are going to start denying cases outright from the very beginning if they don't receive the required evidence. So we have a checklist for every type of case, for every stage of the case. It's all every case is different. Okay, especially depending on the relationship, whether it's family based or by employer, and even through employer, there's different categories. Same thing for family based, different categories. So within our law firm, we're very organized. We have different workflows where we know if one task is completed, we know what to do next. It's all automated. Okay, so I can understand for yourself if you're trying to file on your own, it will take you some time. But please be patient with yourself. Review the instructions carefully because we want to be a guide for you in that USCIS accepts your application. You know when they accept your application and your package when they send you a notice in the mail saying receipt notice, and usually on the、uh, middle right column it will show the amount that you've paid with it too. Number one, review all the instructions and review it carefully because most instructions are actually have a lot of pages. So please read them carefully. For example, it would include what type of evidence is required for you to file this application. I've heard of some people. We've had some clients come in where we have to take over the case because they did not provide the evidence that is normally required with a certain form. Let's say a petition I-130, family-based petition. And so,、uh, for example, one of the main ones is a birth certificate. So that goes to tip number two. Is that if your birth certificate or your beneficiary, your family member's birth certificate, of course, is in a different language, then it needs to be translated. So it needs to have a certificate of translation. Essentially, each translation document needs to have a certificate of translation, and it would go something like this: I, the translator's name, and competent in English and Spanish, and an able to. Translate in both languages, and then they sign the name and date it. When clients come to us and they already have some kind of translation, sure, there's some kind of seal, there's some kind of stamp, but that's not what USCIS cares about. They want to see that statement to make sure whoever's doing that translation has knowledge, is competent in both languages, which makes sense. But they're really picky about it, so that's why we want to prevent any. Um, delay for you on that situation. So, bonus tip: even if the birth certificate is in English and the other language, we highly recommend you still get a translation, because we we've tried it before where we included a copy of the original birth certificate because it was in both languages, and because it was in both languages, we decided not to include a translation. So, even though it was very clear. To an officer that you could see both languages and especially English, they are very picky. Now we have had situations where immigration would accept it as is, but every immigration officer can be different. So, therefore, we recommend you getting a separate document that shows a translation. Tip number three: make sure when you review the、uh, instructions and the forms on the USCIS website that you're using the most recent. Addition, okay. So when you scroll down to the page, let's say I one thirty, the main page of that, you scroll down. They'll have a little section that says addition date. The addition date. There's two dates on the form. The top right date is the expiration date. You don't want to look at that so much because that can confuse you. So pay attention to the bottom left corner. That's where the addition date is located. Sometimes USCIS will accept an expired form. 
because they still accept the, the specific edition date. I know this sounds silly because most, if not all, the questions are the same. So I'm not sure why they have a different edition date, even though the questions are the same. So anyway, keep in mind, they will reject your case if on the USCIS website, it says they're only accepting one edition date. So don't use the previous expired one. Tip number four, when you're sending a package through the mail to USAS, it's not just going to be the form itself. Let's say the petition again. There's going to be some requirement of evidence to prove your relationship. So if it's, married, if it's about your marriage to a U.S. citizen, if one of you had been divorced, for example, you need to provide proof of that divorce. Sometimes clients come to us and say, well, I couldn't find my divorce order or I only had the last page of the divorce order. So I thought the last page with the judge's signature was enough. No, it's not. The government, USCIS, requires all pages of your divorce order. Tip number four is creating a list. You can call it a table of contents, a table of exhibits. That's what normally we do, we refer to as in the law firm. But for you, you can call it a list. Essentially, it's a list of all the evidence or all the documents that you're providing to the government. And the reason you do that is because who knows, maybe... Uh, for example, you include your passport size photos, uh, but USCIS officer who is receiving it may misplace it. So if they send you a request for evidence or they just straight out deny your case for whatever reason, then at least you can look at your letter and your list that you provided to USCIS and say, well, look, I actually did provide it. Or for example, we had a case, one of our first few cases uh, back in 2011, the government asks for a copy of the proof of entry because uh, if you're trying to adjust status, you need to have some proof of entry into the United States, uh, such as an I-94 that in the, back in the day it came in a little white card and now it's all electronic the past few years. Anyway, if you don't have that, which, which is important by the way, we had a case where we did provide that, but the government sent us a request for evidence only asking for that. And I'm thinking, everyone on our team is thinking, well, hey, we did provide it, government, because it's in our list. We have it part of our, part of our scanned file. But what can we do, right? At least they provide us a request for evidence. So we sent that off back to the government as soon as possible. We don't want any delay. That's what we're about. When, we're all, when our office receives a request for evidence or any type of document such as notice of intent to deny, which we never had one before, actually, We've only taken over cases where they had it themselves or they hired a different lawyer. We've got that taken care of for the client and got approvals. So what I'm trying to say is, please do not forget to prepare a list of what you're providing to the government. And along with that list, you want to provide a letter to the government that would go on top of your package explaining why you're eligible and how you're eligible. Okay, so what we do is we go through the legal requirements. And of course, we take very due diligence to provide the analysis, especially if there's any crimes involved. We want to be upfront about that. Now, tip number five is USCIS has a form that's basically e-notification or electronic notification. The form number is G1145. If you provide that with your package, you want to put it on top of the stack, okay, on top of your cover letter. And what you can do is you put your email on there, you add your phone number, and what the, what the government will do is when they receive your package in the mailroom, they'll eventually send you a text or an email with your receipt number. You may not necessarily know which receipt number goes to which form, but it doesn't matter. At least you get a receipt number. Now, lately, summer of 2020, it's been taking quite a while to receive uh, a receipt notice, but the e-notification is still faster. So provide that along with your, uh, so at least an e-notification will be in addition to your tracking number through the mail, whether you send it by UPS, FedEx, or USPS. So bonus tip, if you send it by FedEx or UPS, which we consider that to be called courier services or courier delivery, that has a different address than if you mail it by US post office, okay? And, and that's because when you send it by UPS or FedEx, someone in the office is usually going to be signing for it. So keep that in mind. And 
I do suggest UPS or FedEx right now because as you've seen in news, USPS is very unreliable in the sense that it will be delayed. It will still get delivered, but it will be delayed. We'll have a different episode sharing more tips because there's a lot that we can uh, guide you on to make sure that your case is accepted. Now, accepted does not mean approved. Accepted is just the very first step in your case. Friends, the reason we're providing these tips today is because uh, this is a reminder that back in July of 2018, so only about two years ago, USCIS issued a memo or letter stating that, that they're going to outright straight through deny cases if they don't have the required evidence. Uh, so they don't, they're saying they don't have to send a request for evidence or a notice of intent to deny. The notice of intent to deny basically means, hey guys, this is your last chance. If you just give us a crap ton of evidence because you're really missing a lot, we'll give you a chance. Okay, here's your chance. But we likely don't think you're going to provide all this evidence. That's essentially what they're doing. But the government is saying now they don't even have to give you that chance at all. So that's why in our law firm, we have different checklists for each type of case, each type of category. So what does this really mean for you? This means that if your case is going to be rejected, then you're going to have to start over, right? When they reject your case, that means they haven't spent your money. They haven't accepted your money because if they accept your case, then they accept your money. But that could be a time delay of one to two months on average, especially with what you hear in the news about the U S post office delaying mail. So there's another plug that you should use a different service such as UPS or FedEx. And friends, I understand if a case is denied, that delays your situation, that delays your ability to have a work permit. And when you get a work permit, that also means you can get a social security number and also you can get a driver license. So I, we understand that timeline and that urgency. So that's why within our law office, like we said, again, we have a checklist. We have a checklist for ourselves within our own team and one for you. Okay. And so we check with our clients almost every week to make sure that we have all the documents possible because we understand the timeline that you want your work permit, you want your drive license as soon as possible. So with that being said, join us, give us a call, schedule an appointment with us. If you just are concerned about your situation, if you don't know if you have certain evidence, we want to make sure you have all of it. Because again, if you only provide some of it, some of the required evidence and not all of it, USCIS can reject your case. Remember, President Trump's administration is trying to deny as many people as possible and essentially really trying to discourage people from even applying in the first place. Now, friends, if you enjoyed the information, the tips today, if you found that valuable, please hit subscribe if you haven't already. Smash the like button and please leave a comment. Leave, put a question in the comments below because we want to know if there's a way we can help you, even if we're not uh, have an attorney-client relationship, okay? We want to point you in the right direction. Until then, we'll see you next time.